The reason why I choose this documentary is because once I was a vintage bike owner, taking the current scenario, it's still a relevant topic to talk about and bring light to the change in culture of motorcycle riding and address all the sides of it. Starting with vintage bikes during the late 80s, the first production of bikes created a new wave of culture and a new way of commuting. During those times, bikes like RX100, Samurai, Shogun and many more bikes were introduced. One for one, it was a very competitive arena. Post 30 years, now things have changed. We see the shift to EV bikes and EV cars. Back then, it was the competition between two bikes. Enough, it's between petrol versus electric. What's your name and how old are you? Which is the place you are based and how many bikes do you own? Uh, actually, my name is Joel Sebastian and I'm 21, of year, 21 years old and I live in Bangalore. Actually, the first bike which I own was a scooter, like which I bought with my father's money. Like he bought it for me and the one which I am currently using is the 2017 model Mojo XT and recently I purchased a Revolt RV from those two. Why did you go for Mojo in petrol segment and Revolt in EV segment? What's the reason behind it? Uh, first of all, like whenever I get a bike, I want to be a unique one. So. First, my mo Mojo, like it's a bike which has been launched along with Domino, which has been, seen, been in the Indian market since 2016. And this bike is an underrated one, like it has been not been properly marketed by its company. But it's a good powerhouse. It's a good tour. For me, the thing is that I love to go on long road trips, even though I haven't gone on long ones, but I'm starting to do that. Uh, and this got a beautiful engine. A beautiful fuel tank like which can go up to like 600 kilometers on a single full tank and it's reliable most of the parts are like premium yeah that's what i had to say about my petrol bike which is Mojo xt 300 and secondly i recently purchased the revolt rv 400 so like i purchased this bike with the intention of like using the city so because the thing is that nowadays like fuel prices is like really high and it's really hard to uh, afford a 300cc petrol bike in the city every day, uh, like taking it to the traffic, the heavy weight, then everything. So I opted for an EV and this was one of the EV which was present in the market for a long back, like it's been there for based on one, one year or back. So I got my research on it and it's a good one, like it can be used for daily commute but I won't recommend it for people to take for like weekend outing or something. You can have it like and it's good it's environment friendly as the company says but it's good what's your view on vintage bikes yeah about well, vintage bikes like i still adore them i love them so much so like it's an old saying all this gold i join hands with that but the thing is that like as generation pass and we become more futuristic we should move on with the future move on to the future like nowadays the uh, time for four stroke engines you have like several twin cylinder three cylinder four inline four cylinders in various categories and you should move the time but if i am planning to build a garage in future a two stroke will be my first option it will be there in my garage for sure so that brings to my next question uh, what's your view on this upcoming EV trend and the upcoming two-stroke culture carried by our new generation of people. Like what I have to point here is that most of the EV bikes have just made it to a city life. Like they're not nowhere to be seen in urban and like rural village areas because they can't sustain them. EV bikes according to me like you have some fastest bikes from electric category you can see in the top speed list sports bikes and all. But still like in India the thing is that if you're taking the part of EVs, they're just used for like daily purpose. And for two stroke engines, yeah, for two stroke, I'll say uh, these bikes, okay, it's more about being a pa having a passion 
other than like what it's a passion like and according to me the current transport ministry or the motor vehicle department they don't want these old bikes uh, from their viewpoint to be restored and to be seen on the roads they're like these are old just get rid of them from the society it's more polluting for me it's like it's kind of a feeling that you can as a biker like who likes traveling it's kind of feeling that you can't ignore it's all about like like building a bike from scratch from nothing it's another emotion that we can't experience from any other source idhi varana nanna le kadi le 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 idhi varana nanna like one more thing to point out that is when you got look into the pollution factor manufacturing in Actually, more good because okay. ah, mate, minerals. Battery, 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 chemicals are using its batteries in the main batteries that's actually more polluting than petrol vehicles that's why i had said so that brings to my last question if you if you are given uh you know uh the electric bike or a four stroke or a two stroke which one would you choose to ride like first give me a classification on whether you would choose between electric or uh, you know gas bike or I would obviously choose a petrol bike, gas based. So, in gas based bike, if you are given a choice, which one you will go? For example, I am giving you a choice of like a uh, Mojo, as you own it, Mojo versus a classic bike called RD350. So, which one will you choose? For me, like as I have said in the past, for me, like two stroke bikes are a character feeling. This is just take out on like weekend, just morning coffee or something. Right or something. So since we move the futuristic generations, and I would prefer taking a Mojo over RX, but a vintage bike will be there in my collection for sure. Because it's an emotion which you can't let go of. bikes do you own hi i own two bikes there is the rx 100 135 japan engine and another rx 135 five speed 2000 model i was introduced to this vehicle by my brother when i was at my higher secondary school and later came to know more things of this vehicle on behalf of my friends and others too Don't get the fun when it comes to four strokes or any EV vehicles. So this is the mechanism. This mechanism is completely different. Where it's completely manual. You don't have any automated technique in this. So this is the main advantage when it comes to two stroke. The initial pickup, which you get, you won't get in this new coming vehicles or new gen bikes. How do you feel? yourself about riding these bikes down the street so when i feel proud riding these bikes as people who know me when i take to college and other places i don't think so if they recognize me by my name but they recognize me by this vehicle that i have an rx they recognize me and people who don't know me when i take them on streets i hope the strangers or anyone would at least stare at me two to three times two to three times two to three seconds at this bike because of the sound the feel which it gives me that is important it's so I love this bike can you tell us about your first time riding oh that was crazy actually uh, i still remember taking bike morning uh, when the streets are empty i would take this bikes and go out actually for the craziness of the bike whereas you start them and that's a different mentality to go for a different zone uh just Pump it to a different level. Give full throttle and enjoy each and every moment. Like the sound, 
the smoke each and everything that was a great event experience for me man i didn't know that this bike would be so like this and which made me crazier and more interesting towards this bike actually and it comes the initial pickup right that is very other fun changing gears and having a different level of pump gives initial pickup it is it's what i love in this vehicle the sound the smoke the pickup is everything when it comes to stroke why does vintage bikes are different from the newer generation bikes and why you prefer vintage bikes over them that's because of the joy and fun you get in this two stroke uh when it comes to four stroke you want have the same fun and joy because starting a two stroke is like sir bare level and so on you know at a level because when the liquid cooled engine or nothing like that everything is manual so air cooled engine all that like you don't have to worry you know now long ride la pono na you have to give some brakes you can't continually go for a long stretch and all you have to give a break for some 50 to 45 to 50 kilometers you can't continue to stretch because if you stretch like the chances of engine parts get melted as well as the chances of vehicle get seize or so many things are there whereas you should maintain a proper oil and a fuel in tank for a better uh, long run actually how do you feel owning this bike at this point of time oh it's a next level now i feel happy because this new gen children or new gen bikes can't be compared to this legend bikes and uh, i want i make sure that i won't give this bike for most of them to ride i only give this bikes to people who are well known about this bikes actually a uh, new gen uh, people in the sense new gen people they don't know more of this bikes now the main problem faced by the two stroke vehicles are getting banned fitness certificate paying the tax the cops catching them and the sound etc it's different from place to place in certain states the police only say it's not yet banned but can ride on roads with proper documents and if the vehicle is in stock condition but this is not the case in every place nowadays it's getting difficult to maintain and ride a vintage bike bikes like rx and samurai got bad names and people start to misuse it for robbery and performing dangerous stunts with them modification is another side of this problem after market products are installed engine is ported and increasing the silencer sound this is a topic where we can debate and get to a conclusion because it has lot of points and unnoticed sides to it What's your name? What's your age and where are you from? Uh my name is Peter. I'm 21 years old from Kerala. Which bike do you own? I own an Aether 450X. Why did you choose an electric scooter like Aether than going for a traditional petrol scooter? I do not see a vehicle for more than uh, the purpose of why it is built. Uh that is to ride on it. So if something is more economical and if something is more feasible to me even when the price of it to buy it at first is a lot more the cost of investment is a lot more i would prefer it because uh gradually over time it would uh, reduce as in the cost of owning it would reduce plus it's very good for the environment so that's also another reason what's your view on old vintage bikes like i said i do not see a vehicle for more than the purpose of why it is built that is to ride on it and okay there there might be people who might love it and there might be people who might feel like those are the most amazing vehicles ever i would say i mean it it, it causes a lot more pollution to the earth than it should be i mean uh there is a rule in canada or i believe all over india that you should not own a vehicle for more than 15 years so and those these things are implemented for the right reasons because after the 15 year mark your vehicle starts to produce a lot more carbon dioxide than it should be and pollutes a lot more so i feel like it is a waste of time but i mean if pe- if that what makes people happy let that make people happy how does it feel to own an electric scooter and what are the pros and cons 
So one of the most uh, best con, uh, the best pros of owning a an electric scooter is that I do not have to take it for my monthly or weekly service like I would have taken for my other scooter. As as there are a lot more less, as there are a lot less moving parts in it, and there are a lot less things to get wrong with the electric scooter. The only hassle that I find personally is the charging, but in a city like Bangalore, uh, I don't see that as a big issue because the most I would have to travel is five to six kilometers, that is from my home to college. So that's it. So I do not find that as a big issue personally. But if you were to go for a long drive, that would be an issue considering there is the EV infrastructure right now is very low, but it will improve a lot more in the future. But I mean, as of now, that's the only problem I see. But when considering the pros that it is a lot less, uh, it's a lot more economic than owning a, let's say a two stroke vehicle or any other bike per se. I would find I would take this con at any day. Do you think we are ready for the change to EV right now? So, at the current scenario, I would say that we are not ready. There are a lot of reasons for that. The we do not have enough lithium or uh, iron phosphates for us to produce the amount of batteries that would be re- required, or we do not have the infrastructure built at least in India. The amount of factories that are required to pull out this many vehicles, we do not have that. But let's say in another five to ten years down the lane, uh, down the lane, we might see a lot more charging stations pull up. There might be even better alternatives than compared to an EV vehicle. So we are yet to see all of that. And like I said, the problem with EV vehicles is the range and the time it takes to charge. With a diesel or a petrol vehicle, you can barely it it it, it doesn't take you more than a minute or two to refuel, and you can you're safe for another 100 200 kilometers so but that isn't the case for an EV vehicle according to you what all steps should we take to ensure a safe ride in EV if you were to take history and account uh, the first cars in that were ever built were not safe they were prone to being uh less in if you throw a cigarette butt right next to it they would blast that's how the things were that was that was then and technology has advanced a lot so i believe Electric vehicles are still in its testing phase, its uh, incubation phase. It would take it a lot more time for it to improve. So considering it has been, let's say, max to max five to 10 years since this whole concept has come and popularized around the world, it will take some time for it to come. So uh, to in order to make it safe, there can be a lot more government regulations on it. That I see that there are a lot less. Right? At the moment, they can pull in a lot more to make sure that it's safe. Okay, we can talk about we can talk the same about gasoline vehicles as well. Uh, faulty airbags. There are there are a lot of problems with gasoline vehicles as well, and uh, the, the clutch don't work sometimes. The brakes don't work sometimes. There are a lot of problems which you would you would not find on a let's say uh, EV vehicle. So I mean, it goes both ways. What do you have to say to the upcoming generation who is interested in riding, irrespective of being petrol or electric? I mean, I mean, do what makes you happy. But at the same point, you are responsible for what would happen to your kids and to your grandkids. I mean, yes, there is an old argument that mining lithium and other minerals to make batteries would cause a lot more environmental damage compared to a gasoline vehicle from when it is built but when we take it all when we take the graph of over 20 years it would flatten out and the gasoline vehicle doesn't flatten out it just keeps on going up so i mean if driving a gasoline vehicle makes you happy makes you want to do things in the morning go for it i wouldn't say not but if you are somebody who gives a damn about the environment or gives something about a better sustainable life on earth which we should be considering the global warming uh, the uh, the rapid pace of global warming in it, in the world i would tell you to go an alternative route but i mean whatever makes you happy let it make you happy that's all i have to say as we can see electric vehicles are still in the testing stage and can't be replacing petrol vehicle anytime soon because they are unstable Exploding batteries, engine failing for no reason, not enough of charging station are certain things which we have to look into. There are numerous ways where we can look into this matter and my goal is to show some things which we have to take into consideration. 
A change is not always rapid. If it is, the chance of getting failed is high. Ensuring everything and taking steps slowly is always the safer side.